Good morning or good afternoon whenever you're watching this. Now this video is going to explain uh, Hooke's Law, Spring Constant. Um, um, I'm going to demonstrate the um, oscillation of a spring lab and go through the processing with you. And then there will be the next part which is the pendulum lab explanation and what you are supposed to do with that. So, the, a spring is a coil that can stretch when you uh, exert force on it. So, to define the oscillation of a spring, we're going to need to first define the characteristic of the spring itself. Not all springs are different. Some of them are more loose, some of them are more rigid. So applying the same force can mean um, it can extend this much or this much or this much, depending on the characteristic property of the spring. So how do we define this property of the spring? We actually uh, call that the spring constant. Hooke's law uh, relates force uh, acted by a spring as negative k times x. Now, in this formula, x is the extension, how much a spring extends from its equilibrium position when a mass is hanging. Not about the oscillation, this is defining the spring constant itself. So, if I hang a certain mass and it goes from this level to that level, that would be how much it is extending. So, the difference from equilibrium position, difference in length from equilibrium position, from free position. K stands for spring constant, its unit is Newton per meter. The negative sign indicates that the force of the spring is in the opposite direction of the weight. Uh, the force of the spring uh, is obviously given a Newton. So I'm going to quickly demonstrate that to you. I'm going to hang that spring right here, hook a mass on it but I'm going to need to mark my zero point. So let's say this is the equilibrium position. And when I hang a mass, now roughly here. So the distance from this point to that point is the extension. And if I hang, well this is 200 grams and the extension would be from 700 millimeters to actually 800 millimeters. So I think I can safely say it's 10 centimeters. So first I I use 200 grams uh, mass, which caused an extension of 10 centimeters. Keep it there, and let's increase the mass. It will obviously give a larger extension. So now, it's extending all the way to about there. Um, that would be, from equilibrium, 23 centimeters, with a total mass of 300 grams hanging. So I'm not going to do a lot of data collection on this to save time, but the idea is that to turn this information into the force formula, uh, you multiply that by g to find the weight and change that to meters and then divide force by the extension to find the spring constant. Um, let's see what that would be. So, 0.3 kilograms times 9.8. This is 2.94 newtons. Uh, 2.94 newtons divided by 0.23 meters divided by 0.23 meters. This gives a spring constant of 12.8 newton per meter. 
So let's assume that I did that with enough increments and enough measurements, and that is our spring constant. We're going to need it in the formula. Now, let's come to our spring oscillation lab. This one I'm going to use to teach you how to process, how to collect data, how to process the data, how to use, how to manipulate the formula to pick your variables. Now, when I explain each step, feel free to pause the video and make notes because you will need to do exactly the same procedure, almost exactly the same procedure when you do your map IA. So this part is important for you to learn what to do um, when it's your turn. I'm going to make a note of the spring constant we found right here, about 0.8 newtons per meter. Get rid of all the stuff to clear my board. Now, oscillation of a spring is defined by this formula right here. This says t equals 2 pi in square root mass over the spring constant. So it looks like this. If this is the lab I'm investigating, if I want to find a spring constant, using this formula. There are two variables other than k in this formula. So I have t, which is the time period of one oscillation, and mass, obviously, in kilograms. So first step to figure out what to do with this information uh, to find k would be to rearrange this equation for k. So algebraically, when you rearrange that, you're going to have k equals 4 pi squared m over t squared. All of this happens after you do your research. So if this was my IA, I would have researched period of a, of a spring, what are the factors affecting the period of the spring, what is spring constant, or something like how do I find spring constant using oscillation of our spring. Anything like that would get me to this mathematical relationship. In all physics IAs, you're going to need in your research to include a mathematical relationship that leads you to selection of variables because that's where you're justifying your variables. The minute I find this, which in our case is given to you, I know what my variables are and I rearrange for my aim. My aim is to find this pretty constant. I want to know what variables are involved. The minute I have that, I know what I'm going to measure. I need mass measurements and time period measurements. But I have a small problem, they're not directly proportional. Mass uh, is directly proportional to k, and t is squared in the denominator. Now, next step is to decide what kind of graph would allow me to get k. Now, you have learned that if you plot a graph of y versus x, this could be in variables, the slope of that graph means the ratio of the y label to the ratio to the label of the, the x label. So whatever you put here divided by what you put here, if that has a meaning, that's the ratio, that's the gradient of the graph. So mathematical reason if you k, well 4 pi squared is obviously a constant. K is proportional to mass versus t squared. So I'm going to put my mass here and I put my t squared here, the slope of this graph will be mass divided by t squared, which is this part of the formula. So if I plot a graph, if I was writing this as an IA, I can predict mass versus t squared graph gives me a linear uh, trend line, and that will be the slope of my uh, trend line. Multiplying that by 4 pi squared is k. To evaluate that, I will cross-check across that number. But that's not our concern at the moment, initially. So, now, the problem is, what variables do I select? What measurements do I do? And what processing do I do to satisfy the requirements of my IA um, criteria? 